Hello Wolfpack. Now we said yesterday that breaking over 23.8k on a daily candle would be a buy signal and it was in fact a buy signal. However, we also mentioned the fact that we are still in a bearish consolidation structure. We are in an ascending channel formation as you can see if you narrow it down and say for example you want to delete this bottom line you could say it's an ascending wedge formation. You can also see we're in an RSI compression pattern in the form of ascending triangle formation. Whichever way you flip this chart right now at least in the short um, at least from a daily time frame, we are in bearish patterns, right? And that's why I said, okay, well, look, CPI came in good, PPI came in good as well. Both of those things, uh, you know, pr uh, producer price index and consumer price index both came in a lot lower than expected, uh, which is an indication that the macro situation is reversing from bad to slightly less bad and gave the market some room to move to the upside. Uh, there's no denying that those things both came in good and the macro situation is looking a little bit better than what it was. And there's no denying that we did actually break above 23.8k, which is the critical resistance we needed to break. If you scroll back to 2020, uh, you can see that come up as a daily candle resistance and then scrolling all the way through back to current price action, it came up as a daily candle resistance once again. So that was the critical level. And we said, okay, breaking 23.8k would be a buy signal. We bought, okay, and now what we've seen is uh, quite a bearish candle, right? We've seen a shooting star formation, a long candle wick to the upside with a very small candle body, just holding on to that 23.8K support. What we said yesterday was this, and I will stand by this. If we come back and close back below 23.8K, that would be an indication that we don't have the strength to hold that support zone, at least at this point in time. And that would be an indication that we need to sell that position, right? Very clear, very straightforward, right? I'm not going to be holding this position if we drop back below 23.8k on a daily candle. There's simply no reason to do that. I would rather take the loss, take the, you know, 1%, 2% loss and buy back again when the market's looking a little bit better. You know, with that said though, we haven't lost it yet. We're still holding it for support, at least from a daily candle. Uh, for example, we've still got on the hourly chart here, we're still holding it for support quite clearly. We do have a rounding top formation, which is very bearish. And we do have that bearish shooting star formation, of course, uh, but it's not gone yet, right? It's still holding, wait for that daily candle. Uh, unless we break down below this wedge before the daily candle, there's really no reason to sell. So say, unless we go below 22.8K before the daily candle, there's no reason to sell at this point uh, because we see lots of wicks and wicks don't necessarily mean too much. So other than that, there's not necessarily too much to update. If we look at the weekly candle, for example, we've got three days until the weekly candle close. It would be very, very ideal if we maintain that weekly candle close above a two-hour week SMA. And in fact, it'd be great if we closed above 23.8K so we can finally conquer that resistance once and for all. If we go to the three-day candle, uh, the three-day chart, we can see there is a very strong RSI downtrend. And this is one of the reasons why I'm a little bit skeptical about this position in Bitcoin right now. I don't necessarily think it's the best position. I think the charts are bearish. I even said that yesterday, but you can't deny when a critical level is taken. I really don't think the charts are particularly bullish right now. I think there is a breakout to be had, right? So for example, you know, at the same time that we came up and tested the top of this uh, ascending channel formation, we came up and tested the top of this RSI downtrend on the three-day chart, uh, which you know is, is a very critical resistance that needs to be broken. Now, if we do break it, that's awesome. If we do break it, we'll probably just zoom straight up to 28.6K, right? That's why I'm not willing to sell the position just yet because the fact of the matter is, yes, you know, things don't look good at resistance and you necessarily shouldn't necessarily buy resistance, but at the same time, uh, you know, buying, you know, I, I guess at the same time, after a resistance breakout, that's when the most price action happens. So it depends on your risk tolerance to a certain extent. I've said to people in the past, if you're not happy with the risk of this position, you do need to buy higher at 28.6K. But the way I see it is that, well, what are we risking here? We're risking like two or three percent loss uh, to to get in before the macro shifts uh, from from bad to slightly less bad. You know what I mean? So anyway, bearish candlestick formation on the daily, right? Bearish charting patterns on the daily. Big, and this is what I haven't spoken about before. Massive uh, uh, resistance line here on the daily. This yellow line. I'm going to make it a, a pink line just so you guys can see it. This line on the daily is quite uh, massive, right? So I'd say personally. And this is very important, I'd say personally, if we do come back below and break below 23.8K on the daily candle, that would be a sell for the position. And I wouldn't be buying again uh, if we break above 23.8K. I'd be buying again if we break below, break above this downtrending pink line on the RSI. And I'd be buying again if we break above this three-day downtrending line on the RSI. Because if we lose 23.8K on the daily candle, that would be confirmation to me that 23.8K is not actually, <clears throat> not actually the level we thought it was. It's not as... Uh, 
concrete as we thought it was is actually very tangible it's not very you know strong uh, so yeah very important that this daily candle maintains above 23.8k if it doesn't we will be selling and if we sell we're not buying back again until we break uh this rsi three-day line uh and this pink downtrending line that's how i'm going to play bitcoin now uh, i think that's the best way to do it now do i think we'll lose 23.8k look the TA hasn't mattered for a long time on Bitcoin. To act like it's going to matter now is a little bit ridiculous. I mean, you know, if the TA mattered, we shouldn't, we should, we should have rejected here in July and gone down from there. But the point is, the TA does matter. Obviously, it's still being respected. I mean, these lines still have importance. But the point is, you know, the probability of something that's bearish playing out bearish has significantly decreased because the macro structure has completely changed. Right? You know, if you go back to something like. Uh, over here uh, in early to mid 2022, uh, you can see that this bearish, you know, for example, a bear flag formation actually played out as expected because the market structure was bearish even on the macro. Now the macro structure is bullish. And so we've seen uh, many kind of weird things start to play out. Now this bearish structure and these bearish structures here haven't played out to the upside yet. Uh, but if they do, it, it honestly wouldn't surprise me too much. So yeah, that's that's how I'm playing it. I'll just say it one more time, just to concrete, you know, just to confirm it. What I am doing, how am I playing Bitcoin right now? If we close below 23.8k, or if we come down and break below this descending wedge formation, ascending wedge formation, that would be a sell signal. And if we do sell, I'm not buying back until we break above this downtrending line. Uh, and if we maintain above 23.8k on the daily, cool. Let's just stay in the position. Uh, but and I will say right now, the technicals aren't giving me the best signs. They are showing a bit of a weakness. Uh, if we're looking at, for example, the Ikamoku cloud, uh, we've rejected off the top of the Ikamoku cloud. The Gorgian channel is another one. We have rejected off the top of the Gorgian channel. We have broken both, you know, we're, we're within both of those things. And generally, when you go within the Gorgian channel and within the Ikamoku cloud, it does symbolize the fact that you will break it to the upside sooner rather than later. So yeah, I can't sit here and say that this is oh, the most bearish thing that's ever happened. We should get out right now. That's why I'm giving Bitcoin a chance here. I'm saying, okay, if we come back down and close below this uh, resistance zone, support zone, then I will sell. But at this point, all I can speculate on is like, well, oh, it doesn't look as good as I would have liked it to look. But that doesn't mean it looks terrible yet, right? We do need to be waiting to see for that confirmation. Uh, so yeah, that's it for Bitcoin. Just basic stuff, really. Just reiterating some points that I've made before and just updating you on how that position is going. Uh, you know, ideally what happens here is we break this bear flag to the upside. Um, you know, the charts themselves aren't looking particularly bullish, but hopefully the macro can drag us through the situation. Now, until that happens and until 28.6K is broken, you know, we are still in a macro bear market uh, and that's objectively true. Uh, we are not out of a macro bear market until we flip 28.6K. That is the critical macro level. Uh, but as of right now, we are considered short-term bullish because we're in a short-term uh, position that is favoring the bullish argument. Uh, yeah, but that, that's very important to note, right? So just because we're moving up a little bit, it doesn't mean the bottom is 100% confirmed in. It's, it's, you know, it's definitely 100% possible that the bottom is in, but that won't be confirmed until we break that 28.6K level, which could still be honestly, you know, a month or two away. Uh, we really just don't know. Uh, there's not much evidence to suggest anything of the sort on that matter. So without further ado, I'll end the video there. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's check out Wolves of Crypto VIP. If you go to my YouTube channel homepage, if you click the join button, uh, you will see all the perks you can get for Wolves of Crypto VIP. Uh, you can see it's 28 USD a month. You get four altcoin trading signals a week, prioritized reply to comments, a two-hour lecture on market psychology, and exclusive Telegram group access where we share our opinions on the market amongst the VIP members only. Uh, you've also got the BitGet Exchange. Sign up to the BitGet Exchange using my referral link in the description below if you are looking for an exchange, uh, you know, whether it be a first exchange or an exchange replacement, this is the one I would recommend. It's got half the fees of Binance, it's got non-KYC, and it's got systems in place to make sure liquidation wicks driven by the exchange do not happen. Highly recommend BitGet. Uh, and then also the Crypto Academy, so this is a company developed by myself and Megawell Crypto, a fellow analyst in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, we made the Become Trader course to teach people how to trade the proper way because we've seen, you know, it, it, it's no, it's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's no shortage of courses, right? There's so many courses out there you can find. I know you guys probably all know like 10 of them, but we wanted to create one that actually was quality because a lot of courses just throw information at you. You buy it and then they just give you a bunch of lectures and then you're expected to learn. We didn't do that. We gave you verbal learning, visual learning. We gave you, uh, you know, quizzes, you know, worksheets, trading diaries, all of these different things to actually consolidate that information within you. It's about 40 hours of content. And if you want more information, 
uh, on the course, go ahead and chuck us an email at cryptoacademycourses at gmail.com and we'll get back to you with all of the relevant information as well as what it looks like. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.